Welcome to the Birdhouse Dynasty Show, and tonight we're going to be talking picks 109 through 206. And to get things started off, we've got a trade from my Lemmy's Dynasty League. That's a 12-team Superflex Start 10. And in that deal, we had the golden boy, C.J. Stroud, of this offseason, as well as a 25-third coming over to Foss Boss. And he had to deal over to Lake Slavic, Jamar Chase, Justin Fields, and the 112. I'm going to kick this one over to Matt. Let <laughs> us hear his thoughts on this deal to start it off. Yeah, thanks. I um, This is this is a, a, an interesting trade. Uh, it's fairly balanced, right? So it's it, it decently balanced. I, I, I'd probably go either way here. Uh, yeah, as approval, right? And then, um, yeah. looking at CJ Stroud, uh, I mean, wow, right? Uh, second yeah. year quarterback, uh, probably got a lot of value out of that draft pick based on where he was drafted and what people thought For about sure. him coming in. Uh, so to be able to turn that plus a future third into Jamar Chase, potentially fields you know, clean some things up over this next year and gets a starting job in the next year too. That could work out. But then also to land yeah. uh, the 112 uh, for this year's rookie draft. I, I mean, look, I'm a big Texans fan. <laughs> so there's a <always laughs> lot to like about uh, getting Shroud. However, for me, I, I would like to have that 112, Jamar Chase, and then potentially a younger quarterback that could be something down the road. Um and this is a super flex, right? Correct. Yes. Uh, and start ten. And I, so I, the the one twelve pick is somebody that you know is a, a borderline starter flex potentially. Yeah. Um, so there is that advantage to him. You know, you're getting two starters versus one, I guess. But um, to have a little more context to this deal, Foss Boss only had one starting quarterback. He was left hanging with Fields as his second quarterback. Mm. So that yeah, was okay. part of it. Um, but from my perspective, I think that rather than going after Stroud and the immense amount of value you had to deal to get Stroud, especially doing it right after the Diggs deal, um, yeah. You know, I would have probably been looking to use that 112 in a different way. Maybe go after like a Jared Goff or some quarterback more in the middle, middling area. Um, use that 112 to do that. Um, yeah. You know, well, like I said, either Goff, use uh, something extra to maybe get Dak um, or go backwards and, and use the 112 and pick up Stafford and plus something. Yeah. yeah. Well, and look, I know we're going to get into some other trades where some of these pieces might be going somewhere else down the road as well. And I'm sure we'll we'll kind of look at that. I mean, I look at this and I, I would want that 112 and I'd want to have Jamar Chase. Um, because with that 112, we're still what like two, two and a half weeks out from the actual NFL draft to have a little bit more clarity. Well, actually, it's two weeks exact. Okay, two it's weeks nice. exact. That's right. So uh once we have a little bit more clarity on that, that 112 could be super valuable uh, and right. could be traded off for much, much more, right? So absolutely. I'll I'll reserve final judgment. If I'm looking at it right now, I, I, I like being on the Jamar Chase and the 112 yeah. side of this. Mm -hmm. Right. I like the flexibility of the 112, so I slightly lean that way. Value-wise, mm -hmm. it is even, but uh, I slightly lean the Chase fields and 112 side. So, Matt, being down in Houston, um, you obviously have big, big things going on there with Stefan Diggs heading into town from the Bills. Uh, can you give us an idea of what things are like? What's the buzz like for the Texans right now? Uh, a lot of excitement, uh, nothing but positivity, right? So around this time last year, there's a lot of questions what is going to happen with this team? What are they going to do with this this pick or these picks? And, um, you know, there was after the draft and all the hoopla that went right before it, right? The C.J. Stroud got a lot of negative publicity, much like uh, Malik Neighbors is now getting, right? Uh, this yep. is just what happens, right? They run out of stuff of to talk about. So 
let's find something to to get some some uh, some viewers and some some hits on our website. And uh, you know, CJ kind of fell right into it. people thought they were crazy for that, but he kind of fell right into their lap. Carolina's probably kicking themselves for this. Um, I would have to say so. I think a lot of it was you know they just played the narrative of the Ohio State quarterback. Honestly, if if I can remember right, last year at this time, that was really the only ding that I could find on C.J. Stroud. Um, as far as a passer, he was exceptional in college. And so it was really hard to find some actual things that were wrong with him other than where he played. Right, right. I mean, to be fair, look at the last few that have come out of Ohio State. You can't. Sure. I mean, you could say Burrow, right? Joe Burrow did play at Ohio State, but he's really he yeah. pl- he really played at LSU, right? Yeah. So, um, but either which way, the the Texans knocked it out of the park last year. Um, there yeah. were some things that didn't probably line up with what we thought we would see out of Houston, right? We thought they'd be extremely run heavy uh, with a rookie yep. quarterback, D'Amico Ryan's coming out for that Shanahan uh, train in San Francisco, being a heavier run team. But because of the offensive line, because Damian Pierce didn't catch on to the scheme uh, as well as he uh, probably should have or as quickly as he needed to, uh, they kind of shifted, and C.J. Stroud really rose, right? He, he started getting rid of the ball quicker. He was going through progressions. And they also drafted Tank Dell in the third round, which turned out to be a huge gem for them. Um, no. They listened to the quarterback they just drafted, brought in a receiver that he that wanted. Who he make- wanted. He specifically requested Tank. Yes, That's I remember right. that. And so you yeah. got a really young duo of receivers for him to throw to. And now you add Stefan Diggs to the to the equation. Right. You bring in Joe Mixon, who's going to be in a similar situation. He's not looking at stacked boxes because of everything that happened last year, right? And if they continue right. to throw it with those three guys on the field, that's yeah. that's a, a very scary for everyone in their division, right? And then they go and for beat sure. up the defense uh, with Daniel Hunter to be uh, – I mean, it's just – it's been a wonderful uh, off season thus far, leading up to the draft, right? So, yeah. um, building off of last year, there's a lot of excitement down here, um, and I think D'Amico Ryan's uh, has gotten a lot of trust, earned a lot of trust uh, from a fan base that has just been dying to have something to cheer for uh, when it comes to football. Yeah, no, I think it's awesome that the Texans have, you know have risen above just being uh, a borderline playoff team. Now they're a legitimate contender. Like I was listening to somebody earlier today talk about the odds for winning the Super Bowl, and they pumped them up to the fourth best team they were seeing. Right now the Texans are at uh, the seventh best team, but those odds just keep dwindling. I think he said they'd figure them finishing around (laughs) 10 to 1. Um, so he thinks they should go up ahead ahead of Dallas and the Bills, which I, I pretty much have to agree with at this point. So yeah, Dallas has think. been idle. Dallas has been idle, and, and Buffalo has a lot of question marks in that receiver room, right? So <laughs> uh, yeah, not near as many question marks in Houston. But we'll get to that a little bit later on what the Bills mm-hmm. might do this NFL draft. So uh, before we move along, Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit, a bit about yourself? You're my first guest <laughs> in the birdhouse. It's exciting for me too, and it's glad to just glad to have you here. Ah, oh, well, thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, I, well, I'm a, a, a fantasy football uh, addict now. I stayed away for so many years uh, because I knew I'd get sucked in just the way I have. Uh, so I'm glad I finally came to uh (laughs) to my fantasy football need because it's uh i get i get so excited this time of year but uh i've I've jumped on some radio shows had a couple of my own with espn and fox sports and um this is this is fun to be able to join you and talk about nothing but fantasy football especially how it applies to dynasty because that is just um really puts you in the as close as you possibly can into that gm chair to try and really run it the right way so yeah so Tell me about how Dynasty has changed your thoughts on fantasy. I was playing regular fantasy football way back since the strike year in 1987. That was my first oh my year. 
first taste. <laughs> yeah, Montana to rice, I'm telling you. And oh, we wow. had a lot of things to try and figure out in that strike year then. So I've, I've had a lot of messes right from the get-go. So but fantasy with the pencil last few years, <laughs> Dynasty, you know, it's really changed the game. And what, I mean, what do you well, think? I, I did that. Yeah, I did nothing but redraft and redraft. And then I tried some keeper leagues uh, and then recently jumped into Dynasty. Um, it's really, there's so much more to take into account. And I tried to do that in my first Dynasty draft and it wasn't horrible, but I've had to kind of learn around uh, along the way. And um, if anything, there's a place to be conservative with how you manage your roster but you got to be willing to take some risks and you have to be willing to move pieces around, whether it be picks or players. Um, you, you have to be willing to let go of things uh, if you want to continuously win um, or if you have to turn something around. Right. So right. Uh, you can't yes, really you get married to, to take chances. Do what now? You definitely have to be willing to take risks. Yes. Yes. Sure. No player marriages. Um, no no team marriages you can't have any of that <laughs> you just got to play the numbers and be analytical as you can yeah you have yeah. to almost just treat them as as stocks right mm -hmm. they're their assets these players it. as hard it is as it is to look at them that way because they are truly humans and that's why the dynasty values can change drastically we've had that happen this off season mm -hmm. now it's funny with uh the OJ Simpson passing and that that's, you know, unfortunate. I don't know where, where were you, Matt, that night in the mid nineties when uh, OJ was riding that Bronco out in. No, I LA. remember I was in high school and I do remember watching um, part of that chase on TV in, in high school. So uh, I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep my personal opinions to myself. I think a lot of people can agree regardless. Oh, I, of how I you know what the court of public day. opinion is. It's totally well, fine. Regardless <laughs> of how you feel, it wasn't like his life was very nice after that. Right. So you know, it, it was very difficult for him the rest of the way, no matter how you split it. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember I was also in high school and I was at a basketball camp and we're watching the Rockets Knicks finals it was either game six or game seven don't remember which game, game seven exactly it was game oh, what, seven was it john Clinton? stark game <laughs> yes okay and uh all of a sudden it just cuts to some white bronco in the freeway in la and we're all you know there was a crowd of like 10 of us because it was later in the day obviously after we had just played basketball all day long and all we wanted to do was watch the finals and here you gotta sit and listen to oj's issues but yeah. anyway no, houston like did said, win that series by the way which was really nice for us too so <laughs> <laughs> it was i love that rockets team that was a true true team all mm -hmm. around uh, the dream was awesome and everybody around that him that was a finely assembled team i must say mm -hmm. um so speaking of off the field issues like OJ had. We have, uh, <laughs> you know, R Rasheed Rice this off season has ran into a few issues, and so his value has fluctuated a lot over the last couple couple weeks. Um, the latest came out what just yesterday that his the uh, the warrant was out for him, and uh, I just kind of we, we don't want to spend too much time on him, but. What are your thoughts on going out to try and acquire him right now? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't give very much. I, if I could get him for maybe like a 2027 20, fourth rounder, I would do it. <laughs> well, I'll say I, I threw out two thirds <laughs> earlier this morning. So what that's, year? that's where I'm at. And I mean, I, I do have Mahomes on that team, so it's kind of why why I wouldn't mind having him. But mm -hmm. I think that for Rishi Rice to go after him at this point right now and what he's got to deal with, it's got to be a certain type of roster that you have. One where you one where you can take on the risk. We talked about risk sure. just a little while ago. 
where you can take on that risk. You don't have to necessarily count on him as one of your top four or five receivers. Um, so he, he would be, you know, your fifth or sixth receiver, I guess. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can take on the risk of losing all the value. I personally don't think he'll miss more than six games. I'm looking at more like a two to three game suspension, I think is what it'll end up being. Cause it looks like the charges are all misdemeanors is what they'll be. Yeah, um, it's real crazy. I you might know him. more. You're down in Texas. You might know more about the laws there, but. Well, I, um, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, there was a, a, a charge that was missing, two charges that were missing uh and okay. what, what what came out right so there's the possession yeah. of the marijuana in both cars um, okay and then also fleeing the scene which is that's the biggest probably issue the, i think the just about everybody has so i want to know fleeing. i want to know why those aren't charges um but i mean if the charges stay the way that they are uh yeah you're looking at a very slight slap on the wrist for a young player right so right. the four six games maybe six to try and say oh we're we're being tough on it, you know, right. but um, I mean, that could have been way worse. And uh, I don't know. That could have been oh. a lot worse than it was. And but. breaking news, he's just turned himself into the police, actually. Okay. <laughs> well, so he's cooperating. He's doing the right things now. He didn't do the right thing a couple weeks ago, but I think he's doing the right things now um, to show uh, some remorse whether that means anything to the families of people who got hurt in the accident, we'll see. Um, but the only, I do know this, the only way he's going to be able to give those people any money is if he's on the football field. That's true. Because I don't know that he has much else going for him as far as a job. So <laughs> he's got to be playing football in order to pay these people off. And I think that the, the families probably understand that too. So they don't want to come down too hard on him. And that's sure. why I fully expect him to be out on the field at some point this season. And I'm willing to take the risk. I'll say that. Um, well, if I could throw out, I, I mean, just a pick that I would totally do, I would say like the 206 probably is a, a range where I could see myself giving up right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's assuming right. you can handle take that kind of risk on to your yeah. roster, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. See, that's the other thing to think about, depending on how your league is set up and what you have available to you. I mean, maybe you throw something out there and not knowing what's going to happen, how hard the league will come down, what it may be if he gets traded because the chiefs don't want to, I don't know. I, we don't know what's yeah. going to happen. So, I mean, if you have a taxi squad, right. If you have that available, maybe you can throw them in yep. there and just see what happens. And you can pull them out at yep. some point, right? So right. I guess it just depends. And let's not pretend that we're all perfect people. How old is he? 21, 22? Right. What if I had that much money with his job, what would I be doing at that age? I yeah. I'm not just coming off a Super Bowl win. win. <laughs> you know, <You're> let's, right. <laughs> let's put ourselves in that in that position. And I don't know if we can all say that we would be perfect little angels, right? So I, I know I definitely wasn't at age 21 or 22 myself. So <laughs> Makes two of us. We'll just, leave it, we'll just leave it at that right now. Yeah. Got a few more responsibilities. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so before we get to picks 109 to 206, mm -hmm. I did want to bring up something because I know you know we're we're in one uh, us, the same league together here, and uh, mm -hmm. I did see this question posed somewhere else, and I just thought. I'd ask you, um, so before picks 109, of course, you have the top of the draft and some very elite talent this year. What would you do if, now in this league that we're in together, you have the 102 and 103, correct, Matt? That's correct. Yes. Now, what would you do if the 101 and 104 were offered to you? Which is actually a possibility in that league because... Yeah, our yeah. fellow Anthony there, he he does yeah. have the 101 and 104. So what if Anthony threw you the 101 and 104? Would you deal the 102 and 103? I'm not asking you to give away anybody that you have in mind and picking yeah. at those spots. That's, um, you know, it's a good question. Um, man, that's tough. Can we come back to that? <laughs> that's tough. Sure that, that's, that's really no tough problem. because when you pick back to back like two and three 
you kind of control what you bring in. And even with the 101 yeah. and the 104, there's a two sp uh, two spot gap there where you don't have control. Um, right. And no matter how well you scout, something can happen or you think you know a manager's going a direction and then they switch gears on you. So, yeah, I really like having two and three. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so. I, I got to say I agree with you. If it was up to me, I, I would lean the second and third picks. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like without the knowing picks. landing spots right now. We're we're right. still a couple of weeks out, but yeah, I think I would have to lean the two and three picks. Right mm -hmm. All right, so <laughs> let's get to business here. We wanted to talk picks one hundred nine through two hundred six tonight, and we're we're skipping to the second tier here uh, because picks one hundred one through one hundred eight are all elite talents, and they all. They're all going to probably be top 15 picks in this upcoming NFL draft. Mm -hmm. So we kind of know that those are the first eight players. But after that, there's some very intriguing talent still this year with such elite talent up at the top. I mean, I, there's six or seven guys that could go in the top 10. And I that's for skill position players, that's unheard of in the NFL yeah. draft. I couldn't tell you the last time even five skill position players were taken in the top 10 of the nfl draft but yeah this is going to be this is this is a really fun draft I, i'll say that i got ants in my pants <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i hear you so with uh if we start okay so at 109 right now i have brian thomas penciled in there okay mm -hmm. and then i just did this quick uh before the show so i have brian thomas uh, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, Lad McConkey, Troy Franklin, Keon Coleman, Trey Benson, and Jonathan Brooks. I threw in the two running backs at the back end there, but it's very likely those two running backs or other running backs, whichever ones happen to get picked first and second mm -hmm. in this draft, will move up all the way to the end of the first round, honestly. So... Let me ask you this. What are you looking to do with picks 109 through 206? What may have you tried to, let's say, go out and, and offer for? Have you been trying to acquire veterans with them? Or are you kind of just staying pat at least until the draft happens so we get some landing spots? What are your thoughts there? Okay, so great Great example because uh, in that league that you mentioned where I have the two and the three, I also own the nine as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll leave what I'm going to do or what I would think about doing out for as it applies to our league, right? So, <laughs> um, but with the 109, it's it puts, I would say it puts you in a unique position, right? Um, depending on, I don't think you should necessarily in the first round be drafting on team needs. I think you should look at what's best available. And if that's, Correct. If yes. that matches something that you want to have, then pull the trigger, right? If it also happens, I've always been a proponent of, you know, if it if you are loaded at wide receiver and the best player available is still a wide receiver, well, then hey, you're just getting stronger at wide receiver. You can we've we've got what four or five months before we mm -hmm. actually have to set our lineups, right? right? You can always trade players. You can trade for a running back. Yeah, I, I mean. Look at it this way, too. If, like, you gave the example loaded up with receiver, uh, maybe you don't need any more receivers, but you also don't want to spend that pick on, I don't know, a running back or a tight end or a quarter, whatever it may be, right? You, maybe you don't want to spend right. it there. So maybe an idea is to kick it back a year or, right. you know, maybe try and trade okay. back to like mid second round and grab another late first round pick for 25 or 26, kick it down yeah, the road. Totally. Or, you know, maybe take that pick and trade it for uh not super old veterans but more getting closer to falling off the edge maybe you need running backs go get a couple of running backs yeah. you know um, yeah. it was so much player movement that i'm sure i i would think you could probably get someone like um maybe like a mix in and a kamara for 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 the 109 um i mean i don't know exactly how that would shake out with points but i think it'd be pretty close yeah, um, you could probably get something tacked on to the Mixon or Kamara side if you're mm -hmm. throwing 109 out there. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. I've been doing a lot of this offseason <clears throat> with my early seconds there is is trying – and certain teams that are more win now, 
I've been going after the the veteran wide receivers, the solid point producing older guys, but mm-hmm. still have a couple of years left in the tank. Like your, sure. you know, your Mike Evans, Calvin Ridley, Keon, Keenan Allen. Um, you know Stephon what I mean? Diggs. So, yes, Stefan <laughs> Diggs now fits right into that role. Right. Um, I mean, Cooper Cup even has slid down to, you know, you probably still got to pay a back end first for Cooper, but um, you get my idea. The guys that only have yeah. two, maybe three years tops left, um, but you know they're still going to score. They're mm-hmm. very valuable to a contending team and maybe more valuable than, say, uh, you know, a Troy Franklin, who, depending on where he ends up, I mean, Troy Franklin goes to the Bills, say, at the end of the first. Well, that probably is a better landing spot than, say, the Panthers at the beginning of the second. Right. 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 <laughs> right. So that's where <laughs> this draft in this area, especially, just becomes so interesting to me. Uh, yeah. And it's just going to be wild at the end of the first round and then day two, especially, right. where all these guys will be gone. Yeah. I'll, I'd say 109 to 112 or all four of those picks or something, depending on what you're, what you actually need, what you see and how you perceive value. They're all picks you can kick down the road a year or two, uh, or try to, to trade off for, like you said, uh, veterans that have two, three years left in the tank that could put you in uh, catapult you into win now. Right. So, yeah, uh, that's, that's what makes those fun. That being said, also landing spot come draft time, there could be some guys that, Based on where they go, you're like, ah, I'm not trading this pick. I I, I got to have this guy now, right? So, right. God, right. two weeks I mean, changes everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, what's what's crazy is you know the, the NFL teams do similar to what I was talking about, what we both talked about the, with the, you know, you don't draft necessarily for need. I wouldn't be shocked if Philly drafts a wide receiver this year in the first or second round. Definitely wouldn't be shocked now if Kansas City does, but and Tampa even. I wouldn't be shocked if they take one in the second round, the first round probably. But that's a. I don't want to get too much into that. What my point is is that certain teams value certain positions differently, and there's certain teams you can tell out there that totally value the wide receiver position more mm-hmm. so than others. And with the way the game has changed, I mean, you pretty much have to have three good wide receivers, which is why I don't blame the Texans for going out and going after Diggs. Um, I mean, three wide receiver sets are pretty much the norm now. Mm-hmm. So that's why, I, and you also have to take contract contracts into consideration. I mean, Philly's got Devontae Smith, whose contract's coming up. So that's why I would not be surprised to see them take a wide receiver right um so you can't just look at it as a cookie cutter type thing oh this team needs uh, a linebacker so they're going to be drafting a linebacker well mm-hmm. maybe their scheme doesn't value linebacker as much so i think that's the most important thing if you're trying to put you know prognosticate what position these teams are going to take you usually end up going down the wrong road because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things get wild in that draft and who knows, uh, a bunch of receivers could end up getting taken between picks 10 and 20 in this draft when teams start trading up and trading around. I, I mean, with, they're, with they're all the trades that happen. With, the, with some of the trades we've seen and some of the free agency movement, we'll say, um, I would – I wouldn't be shocked to see six to seven receivers go in the first round this year. Um, I think you're going to see some teams later rounds get aggressive or later picks get aggressive to move up uh, and get get some of what we would consider that elite talent or that next tier outside yeah. of the big three, right? So mm-hmm. um, whoever Buffalo lands or whoever they get, and they've got to be a top receiver now. Right. They maybe right. they slide past the 109 into 08 uh or 07, yeah. depending uh on how you feel about it. So right. You know, what if what if Cincy packages something with T. Higgins and moves way up? You know, right. so 
There's all kinds what if of the Niners. What if the Niners deal Brandon Ayuk? It's a possibility too. Yes, yes it yeah. is. So <clears throat> lots of different things could happen here. Well, let's get into a couple more trades uh, sure. from that same league we talked about earlier. Uh, we've got, let's see, it's the second one on down I, I had on the list there, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, this one had Mr. DI6, which I don't know if that's Mr. DI6 or not, but <laughs> trading with Lake Slavic. This was a big one. He acquired Jordan Love, the 212, and two 25 firsts. And Lake Slavic on the other side got Brock Purdy, the 202, and the 104. Mm. So we had. Jordan Love, 212, 225 first for Brock Purdy, 202, and the 104. What are yeah. your thoughts initially, Matt? Okay, first look. Two first-round picks next year, the 212 this year, and Jordan Love. Um, yeah, it looks extremely lopsided because I'm pretty sure at 212 there's going to be a decent pick there. Um, the 104 this year, the 202, those are two great picks. And Brock Purdy, I, I, I don't know, man. Next year's draft class isn't supposed to be near as good as this one, but right. Jordan Love lots looks of the running back. And yeah, it, yeah. I, I mean, I think it slightly favors the two first rounds in Jordan Love. I, I say slightly, I think it favors it, it does favor it that way. I mean, that's two future firsts, which you could kick down the road or trade for more. Their first-round picks are going to be valuable come the start Very of this flexible. season. Yep. Yep. There's no movement um, for this year's picks. They are what they are unless you trade them this draft. So um, having the future first-rounders that just hold value, uh, I'm going to lean that that side of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I don't think it's too much lean that way, but, well – no, that's lopsided, well, dude. <laughs> that's lopsided. That's two first. Well, so yeah, if you're running on a calculator, it's going to favor the the Jordan Love side. Um, yeah. If but, I was getting Love in the picks, I'm happy about it. If I was proposed that trade to give it up, I, I would decline that trade. Yeah. Now I know the reason that Lake Slavic went for he. I know why he did it because he really wanted that 104 pick. Um, I think he wants a real uh, uh, one of those big three wide receivers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so when you look at it from that perspective, and also that I know that those two twenty five firsts are very likely to be mid to late. Mm -hmm. Either of those two twenty five firsts are from teams that are in like the bottom five of the league. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you take that into context, I, I could say. Yeah, the 104 probably cancels out the 225 first in the deal. So then if you look at it from a Purdy and 202 versus Love and the 212 perspective, that's not so far off. Jordan Love had an awesome season last year, don't get me wrong. And mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, if you offered me the 101 for Jordan Love, I don't know that I would do it because, I mean, do I want Jordan Love or do I want Caleb Williams? Well, Love's shown me that he can do it right. on the field. Caleb hasn't yet. So if you really need a quarterback, I'd lean Jordan Love, honestly. All right. So his value has obviously skyrocketed this past mm -hmm. season. Um, but then you take Brock Purdy into consideration. And I mean, what does the guy have to do? You know, how long can you hold – draft capital against somebody i guess is well, what it comes down to for purdy i think from a reality standpoint you're absolutely co correct when it talks when you're talking about brock purdy but from a fantasy perspective mm -hmm. he's i don't think he's blowing you out of the water with fantasy no. numbers to help w outright win you games jordan love can <laughs> and he can drop he can drop three touchdowns on you with six minutes to go in the fourth quarter and win you a a, a week Right. Yeah. Uh, that being said, not knowing all the context of these picks and where they fall, I grade. I'll grade any future pick as a mid round, yeah. pick, mid yeah. whatever round it is, just to be uh, on the medium side there. And I still have it graded. Uh, 
I still have it graded better to be on the love side. Yeah. So uh, not knowing everybody's needs in particular, I want a big receiver or not. If I'm just looking at it blindly or objectively, I like having the Jordan love in the future first. Yeah. No, I, I do have to lean that way if I'm just taking it at face value for mm. sure. So, all right. Well, <laughs> get back into back into this this draft with the picks 109 through 206. Um, let's talk the the two quarterbacks that are in that range. You know, Bo Nix and Michael Penix both had awesome seasons this past year in in college, and so right now Bo Nix is all over the place as far as where he's being projected to go. I've heard as high as Minnesota, maybe Denver. They're, they're picking at uh, 12 and 13 right now. And the same goes with Michael Penix, too. I mean, if, if Bo Nix gets drafted that high, uh, I wouldn't be surprised that Penix goes before we're done on day one. Mm. And he gets picked right at the end of the first it's round. True. Yeah, a lot of the new mocks are, are showing Penix moving up after his pro day, uh, especially after the review that Chase Daniels gave him uh, in his little film study. He does a great uh, job, Chase Daniels. He, he does a wonderful out. job of breaking film it down. on quarterbacks. He does a great job. Yeah, he sure does. Um, I, I and I know he's got a, a slew of injuries before he got to Washington. Okay, um, right. I, I just I, I don't know what his true strength is as far as how he goes through his progressions, if he's a, a, a one read and play, or if he goes through uh, all progression, I don't know. I think he, both of those quarterbacks, it's going to depend on their head coach, their offensive coordinator and where they, where they are. Uh, it's not, it's not like, um, well, even if you took Jaden Daniels out, who wasn't on anyone's radar coming into the year, if you just look at Drake May and Caleb Williams. I, I don't think that's so much. They're so much dependent on what, what coach they have. Um, because I feel like where they're going to go, they're building around them and setting them up already. Whereas I don't feel that way with Denver or Oakland or wherever may move up. I just, I I think some of those teams are just going to be drafting a quarterback and spending a lot of capital on them. And it's not going to be what they want. I I just, I, if I was a GM drafting, if I could get them in the second round, maybe, but I, I don't think either one of them are truly first round picks. Will they go well, in the first? More than likely. Let, let me ask you this then. You said uh, you know, landing spot. You mentioned what if either of them, either of them lands in Minnesota? I Whether it's because Minnesota the Vikings is- trade back for Penix a little, or they, you know, they stay in Pat and just take them at 12. Penning, um, I'll say this from from my th- two three games that I watched of him, mm-hmm. he reminds me of if you took Michael Vick and Tua and combined them. So you have the accuracy of Tua and the absolute cannon of Michael Vick. Okay, that's that's fair. what I see when I watch Michael Penix. So if you and I'm if excited you think, for him. Think about his last couple of games, though. Um, and when they played Texas, you know, Texas is it, their defense isn't what put them there. Let's just no, be honest. No, it's, not. it's a very it's a big 12 defense. And right. um, you know, he looked very comfortable, he looked very accurate, the ball was coming out quick, he was hitting receiver, it was great. Then he played Michigan. Michigan's yeah. he's gonna see a lot more Michigan S type defenses, pro style defense that sure. collapses the pocket quickly. He didn't look that great. And he's going to see a lot more of that. I know yeah. t- time and, and coaching and, and this, that, and the other. I, that's got to stand out. Against weak defenses, I think he's going to look great. Against defenses that can give him pressure and make him uncomfortable, I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't see it right now. Same with Bo Nix. I think Bo Nix looks real great with Oregon. But yeah. how does he look outside of that? You know, So I, I think it just really depends on where they end up. I really do. Yeah. Those two Nix guys. is a guy who I, Nix is a guy who okay, I could see struggling, but he, he reminds me of the way he plays just reminds me of Baker Mayfield, but he's mm-hmm. got better tools. He's, he's taller. 
is I don't know that his arm strength is necessarily better, but mm -hmm. uh, I just feel like he has a better pocket presence. And he yeah. is someone, especially I think the, that needs to get into the right system. Because from what I saw, his his short passing game, his accuracy mm -hmm. in the short routes was very good. Right. But then once he starts throwing it downfield, is where he runs into trouble. So yeah. I think if he fit, if he gets in the right system, like Denver, and that's why they they they're they've been projected to take him in a lot of mocks um, because of Sean Payton's system, you mm -hmm. know, that, that worked well with Drew Brees. Um, I think that Sean Payton is somebody that could actually turn Bo Nix into a legitimate NFL starter. Sure. Well, I think so, they both can be starters. I just don't think they'll yeah. be elite starters, like top 15 guys. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, another one who's right on the cusp there, right before mm -hmm. the tear break is J.J. McCarthy. <clears throat> yeah. I'd like to see him in Denver. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think he's super impressive arm strength wise, but you know, towards the end of his career, neither was Drew Brees. Um, but he is yeah. accurate, and all he has done his whole career is win. Um, I'd like to see those two together. If I could, uh, if yeah. I could, I just don't know if Denver's going to move up that high because JJ McCarthy's. I mean, he could go to New right. England at three, is what I, I, exactly. I now, let me ask you this with McCarthy. Do you think that Jim Harbaugh threw that out there in the tweet that he said where he thinks that J.J. McCarthy should be the number one quarterback taken overall just so he could get Marvin Harrison in his lap at pick number five? If I believe he was actually <laughs> going to take Marvin Harrison, yeah, I could buy that. But <laughs> I don't think he's taking Marvin Harrison. Uh, <laughs> I think they're either going to go offensive line or trade back, get a, get a couple of picks, and still go offensive line. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you there. Like, it just doesn't Harbaugh seem like a Harbaugh pick, right? Yeah, um, but that would be something. I mean, I, I know we hear a lot of that stuff, like negative stories come out by the team who wants the player, right, yeah. just so he can fall to them. It, you know, I don't know how much of that's true, but, I, you know, I wouldn't right. put it past any GM. I wouldn't put it past team. Harbaugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so moving on from the quarterbacks, Let's talk some of the receivers in this range. So of these receivers here, we've got Brian Thomas, A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, Lad McConkey, Troy Franklin, and Keon Coleman. Now, Keon Coleman's undergone a lot of scrutiny, so I don't even know if he even gets drafted up into this range. But mm -hmm. um, the other four, at least, Brian Thomas, Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, or five, McConkey and Franklin, those guys all seem to be locked into this area. Um, which one of these do you like the most? Is it Brian Thomas, like everybody else likes right now, or is it one of the other guys, maybe? I, well, I think Brian Thomas is going to be successful. Um, not no matter where he lands, but probably most places where he could land, right? Um, because he is such a big body, he is a deep threat, and my God, in the red zone, he's a target. So, yeah, that's going to work well for a lot of teams. Uh, so, it, it, if if you take him away from it, I really like Troy Franklin. Um, yeah, I feel like both the Texas receivers are really flashy, great combines. They look great on their pro day. Mm -hmm. I'm not overly confident in either one uh, yeah. as standalones. Well, got I some more on them. Yeah. Right. I mean, if they go to camp, one of them goes to Kansas City. Are you not going to love them? Probably will. Right. Right. So, if one goes to Kansas City. They're shooting up to the top of this list. Right. One right. goes to Oakland. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if yeah. I like that. Right. Um, and then Lad McConkley. Oh, my God. This dude wasn't even offered a scholarship. And now he's <laughs> right? projected to go maybe in the first or early second. No, he's got no top end speed to blow the top off. He's great possession receiver, and there's something to be said for that, but you're not spending top first round and early second round capital on that kind of receiver. I'm sorry. Yeah. He is to going to He so seems far. like the, the best, and I know I, I don't want to throw it by the color of his skin, but uh, you know, Adam Thielen is what I see with Vlad McConkey, except for the fact that he's going to get drafted higher. <laughs> I've got a better one for you. Still okay. comes from the SEC, who I think okay. would be better. Um, 
and that's Ricky Pearsall. <laughs> Ricky right. Pearsall well, I don't want to get into an FSU Florida argument here. Oh, but, no, no, it's yeah. not about that. But if you watch the tapes. <laughs> I like Pearsall. I'll, I think I Pearsall's got the better pro, pro translation. We'll put it that way. He's got okay. more speed and um, more. Uh, I'm big I've catch seen his highlight reel catches. I know what the guy can do. He had the best catch last oh, season. The year. Yeah, yeah, he had the best catch of the year. But. Um, yeah, he's got great. He's, he, I don't know. I think he's better when I watch the actual tape and look at the way they come in and out of their routes, who's smoother, who's got more quickness. I just think he's the better catch. But one played on a national championship team and one was a mediocre team. So, yeah, I think actually both of them will ex succeed at the next level. I mean, it, it's hard, hard to gauge these guys when you get down into this range. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, They're if PPR you look guys. at the draft, <laughs> You look at past drafts. I actually wrote down the last five seasons, the draft picks of our our rookie drafts in Dynasty mm -hmm. League. And when you get into this range here, from like late first to mid second, the types of receivers that have gotten taken there, you have to go back to 2020 to find a year where there was actually some solid Great. guys that actually produced. Mm -hmm. In 2020, you had Joe Burrow going at the top of that draft, if you remember that mm -hmm. draft. Then we were stacked up with running backs there with uh, CEH, Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift. Then you had CeeDee Lamb and Jerry Judy. And then finally, <laughs> Justin Jefferson got picked. So right. Justin Jefferson was picked on average at the 110. <laughs> Way back, I don't know if from Justin him. Jefferson hiding in there, like A.D. Mitchell or whatever. But there were some knocks on Jefferson. You mm -hmm. might remember them. He was only going to yep. be a slot receiver, right? Yeah. But then yeah. you also had in that draft turns Brandon out to be the best receiver in the league. <laughs> what was that? I was just saying, turns out to be one of the best receivers in the league. You know, for only a slot guy. <laughs> yes. But you also had Ayuk, Higgins, Pittman in that draft. I mean, mm -hmm. that that was one of the best wide receiver drafts I've ever seen. Going back to probably 2014, which was the yeah. Uh, yeah. OBJ, Mike Evans. Yeah, yeah. Um, big is, class. Yeah. Jarvis big Landry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, if you on, on the other hand, if you go to the next season, 2021, which was the Trevor Lawrence draft. If you yeah. go from pick uh, 110 down to 206, I'm going to read off these names and let me hear what you think. We've got Mac Jones, Rashad Bateman, Elijah Moore, Rondell Moore, Terrace Marshall Jr., Josh Palmer, Diami Brown, mm -hmm. Amari Rogers, and Michael Carter. <laughs> All of them went, <laughs> on average, ahead of Amon Ra St. Brown. <laughs> you know, you know what's crazy is I've got a share of, I've got two of those players in our dynasty league. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> roster, hey, roster clogger, Matt. Roster cloggers. <laughs> yes. I am excited about Rondell, though. <laughs> hey, he's got a new opportunity there. Definitely yeah, some James exciting Carter things in down. Atlanta. James Conner goes down. Michael Carter's got a, a backfield to share. So that's that's, that's important right. to know too. <laughs> Very important. Any running back on a 53-man roster has a spot on my team. I'll um, tell you that. <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> any given week, any given week, you throw them into the lineup and they're good for 10 to 15 points. That's fine by me. <laughs> Based on situation, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, based on situation. Where are we at on time here, Matt? Do we have? Do we get cut off here soon, or no? We're okay. We we're okay. Okay, About ten more minutes on that. So okay, well, let's get into the running backs then, real quick. All yeah. right. So I had Trey Benson and Jonathan Brooks listed. Behind them, though, there's some interesting names. We got Raylan Allen, Blake Corum, Jalen Wright, Marshawn Lloyd. Okay. Right. Where do you see – okay, first of all, who do you think will be the top two running backs taken in the draft? 
if you had to just guess right now if i had to guess i i'm pretty sure it's going to be uh jonathan brooks i mm -hmm. really feel it and look it's not it's not because he would fit perfectly there but he would in dallas the oh, other thing sure. that that, that I, the reason i think that is dallas has more information on him than any other team because their guy did his acl surgery so if anyone uh, knows anything about him it is going to be the cowboys um now that's some good insider information that we're looking yeah for. well it's um he's he's a three down back he's shifty he's patient almost to a fault at times um mm -hmm. so there's there's some really i feel like there's some lead bell in him uh maybe a little bit of aaron jones like people keep comparing him to um okay. i think it's more like lead bell because he's a three down back yeah well that would um, be something special yes. yeah i mean he doesn't have quite the juice that Bijan has but he's really good and then trey benson he's more of an upright runner but behind jonathan yeah. brooks he is a good running back that's not mm -hmm. the end of the world if he's upright uh as long as he's knocking no. people down so, if i I watched Trey Benson a lot over the last couple of years, and honestly, looking at him, he reminds me of uh, Devontae Freeman, another. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm my expectations for him aren't super high, but in today's NFL, all he needs to do is get into a spot where he's, you know, the first and second down banger. Mm -hmm. That's really, I mean, be be Isaiah Pacheco for somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Pacheco has definitely got his role. And he's as far as long as your expectations aren't too high, you're gonna get what you're you're looking for mm -hmm. out of Pacheco. And I can see that from Benson. So Benson's somebody who could go to any number of teams, yeah. honestly. The, um, those are the two I could see actually playing this year. Brooks's ACL is good to go and he's in for camp. I could see yeah. him both playing this year and being impactful from a fantasy perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, Braylon Allen's got sick ball security issues. Blake Corum is small. He's not fast, but he just gets it done. But we I all mean, know he's going if to he the ended Chargers. Up in LA. Huh? <laughs> we all know Corum's going to the Chargers. Yeah, if he ends up there, that you know he's going to play. <laughs> uh, right. Jalen Wright, you mentioned. Uh, I really like Jalen yeah. Wright. He has hardly yeah. any miles on his tires. He was right. misused at Tennessee, not used enough. And, um, I mean, even as a committee back, as a as in more of the pass catching role or the change of pace guy, mm -hmm. I'm, look, put him in Houston. Not he won't go in Houston. He's going to get drafted too early. But if yeah. you put him next to a Mixon in that type of offense, I mean, that's yeah. You want him. The only thing that concerned me with Wright is I saw in one guy's breakdown of him is how often he bounced things outside. Mm -hmm. All right. So he was he seemed a little timid of taking it right up the gut. But again, it, like you said, if he gets in that third down roll, right, that would be perfect for him then. Right. You know, he's not banging it up into the tackles every mm -hmm. every down. And so, Marshawn Lloyd's a coin flip, man. <laughs> That's what yeah. I think he's a coin flip. Yeah. He he reminds me of Rashad White, the way he runs. It was similar. And uh Rashad White. I gotta say, has far surpassed my expectations of what I thought. I think most be. people's. <laughs> yeah, not just me. Um, I thought we were gonna definitely be screwed next year in Tampa or last year at running back, but uh, who knows? Maybe we'll end up with Marshawn Lloyd, and we have both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Got two of the same thing. Exactly. So you mentioned Ricky Pearsall already. Um, Maybe who who are some other sleeper receivers? I I like Xavier Leggett and uh, that's one I've got Malachi listed. Corley. Um, Malachi Corley's another one I like out of Western Kentucky as well. I, I um, watch his film and it's exact. It's Debo Samuel. It, like I can't see other any other comparison. Honestly, I mean his his A dot was super low, and uh, that's the way they used him. He's yeah. um, he's going to bring a lot of value wherever he gets taken because he's not going to get taken is super high. Um, there's only certain teams gonna, that will be take great him. value. Hmm? There's only you know there's only certain teams that'll take a guy like Corley too. He's got to fit into their right their scheme, which you know? is why I think he's going to be a valuable pick. He, even on the fantasy side, I think he'll be a uh, a valuable pick. Uh, I know Roman Wilson's jumping into a lot of uh, 
he's moving up on some people's uh, rankings, which isn't too bad. I think he's solid. I mean, he's a national championship. He's played in a pro style system. So that translates well for him. Uh, I will go back to Keon Coleman. Okay. Just briefly. I don't yes. I think he's getting a bad rap because he didn't have the greatest combine showing. But if you look mm -hmm. at his point of catch and in, 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 in those um, disputed catches, right? I, yeah. I think he reminds me a lot of um, – is it Travis Benjamin? Oh. Also in Florida State? Calvin Benjamin. Calvin, oh. Calvin Benjamin. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. That guy, me. super, super gifted guy. Now, it's not his fault he played with an inaccurate quarterback his rookie year, okay? It's not his fault. Yeah. I mean, a six mm – -hmm. what was he, 6'4"? Something At like least. that. 6'4 six six receiver and the quarterback's throwing it two feet over his hands. And right. he jumped up as high as he – either which way, he never could get anything right after that rookie year. I, and no. I don't know what happened to him, but – Well, he Sean ate Coleman himself out of reminds me of him as a prospect. He reminds yes. me of him as a prospect. Good good um, high catch point, uh, really good with challenge catches. He's a big body. Again, depending on where he goes, he could be very successful. If he ends up in Buffalo, that would be a good spot for him, right? He'll be yeah. catching a lot of deeper balls, contested balls that Josh Allen can just say, he's out there somewhere, I'm going to throw it up. And, right. you know, go get it. Yes. No, I, I agree. Keon Coleman, is, his landing spot is – is definitely important. He needs he needs the right type of quarterback mm -hmm. to be throwing him the ball, and then he could be successful. Yeah. But Baltimore I guess might be a spot for him. Yeah, Baltimore needs receivers. That could be a good spot for him as well. Yep, yep. That would be a. It, I've seen that on a couple of mocks actually, and most people don't think of Baltimore as a great, uh, exciting spot for wide receivers, but. You know, if Lamar Jackson wants to last in this league, he is going to continue to throw the ball more. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you remember Donovan McNabb, right? right. McNabb started out his career as a scrambler. Mm -hmm. But by the end of his career, he wasn't scrambling at all. He was yeah. like like Dak Prescott is right now. He was a real good, solid pocket passer, McNabb. By the Man, end you of think career. highly of Dak, huh? <laughs> you think that Dak? highly of Dak, huh? Oh, come on now! If you've if you've <laughs> won the championships I have with Mister Prescott, you'd know. <laughs> <laughs> no, what can what can you say? The guy, I mean, Dak finished number three in fantasy scoring last year. Well, I mean, um, Justin he, Fields can put up thirty some odd points, but it doesn't mean he's a good quarterback. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> hey, I, I don't need to. I don't need the guy to win any playoff games to win fantasy games. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Just score me points. Score me points. <laughs> what about the Cowboys? Are they going to pick a wide receiver? Or no. I, I honestly, I, I, I don't know what to expect out of them. Hey, they've been so <laughs> mum throughout free agency. Um, well, they have Crooks coming back. I think. But Gallup is gone. Gallup's so gone. Yeah. They're going to have and, to take uh, somebody. We'll, we'll see what Jerry Jones pulls out of this. He'll come up with something. <laughs> All right. Hello. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything died. Let me bring it back up here. My computer, my oh. computer died. So. Oh no! Yeah, I thought we got cut yeah. off. I thought the, no. I thought it ended. No, Do you just it was, get um, one hour. Do what? Do you just get one hour, or do you oh, get? I have unlimited. I have unlimited. Okay. So my computer died. Oh, all right. Well, how yeah. are we gonna how are we gonna do that? <laughs> I didn't well, get to really um, do a close, but that's all right. I've gotten cut off you, before. Can and you I've record just the, submitted it? Can you record the rest of your show and just kind of pick up and be like, oh, I think 
I think I lost Matt there. Um, I'll try to get him back, but in the meantime, let's let's keep moving, right? Um, um, and then I and then try to set that. I I don't really I don't I'm not I I don't know how at least on my phone I don't know how to piece together something like that. So usually, okay. um, what I've done is just uploaded it and then a couple people in the comments say hey you got cut off and i'm like yeah sorry i just had technical difficulties <laughs> yeah i was right I, right at I, 10 I, minutes I, my computer shut down <laughs> oh so, yeah. yeah no what what we got what we got should be good we were pretty much near the end anyway so okay i think i think yeah. what you got let's send it over and okay. uh and we'll be fine I'll just put it in uh I'll just put it in the comments, the first the first uh comment. I'll just put in it. Okay. Sorry we had a little technical difficulty at the end there. But yeah, don't forget to snap the like on and new subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You put like working on new format had some technical difficulty, enjoy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's all sure. I gotta do. This was okay, easily cool. my uh longest episode. So um it well, was you got banter. a blast. Yeah, back and forth. Yeah, so it it's going to go a little bit longer than usual. Right. Yes. Yeah. And uh, no, I think for the first time running through this cold, I uh -huh. think we did it. You know, the back and forth, I think, went great. Like, yeah, right. Not to step on each other's toes while we're talking. Um, but we both obviously like to talk. So, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you're going to have um... it. The more and look, the more that like um, guests or if like you had me and Mark and Anthony on, you know, yeah. those maybe you said it and like you're more keeping us on track and throwing in some stuff or maybe asking the questions right. to us to make us, you know, that kind of stuff. And then it's condensed down to maybe like an hour and six minutes and we're getting through a lot of stuff. Right. The hard part is when we get distracted yeah. and go off on something that we probably shouldn't. <laughs> so, right. Know. Well, yeah. If we do that in the future, like let's say I have you and Mark on, I I agree. I would just be like the moderator, and I would throw the questions mm -hmm. out to you two. Let you talk for two three minutes on it. Let Mark talk for two or three minutes on it, and then I try to cut them off, sort so to speak. Not cut them off, but try to get it moving towards the next you know trade analysis or or whatever yeah just so i i think that uh yeah i think that that would probably be something we we can definitely do here um yeah because i mean over the next couple of weeks i i could honestly do a show a day with the amount of stuff that's <laughs> Dude, out we there do a to talk mock. about like after our dynasty draft, we could do a rookie mock, you, me, and Mark and Tony, and we yeah. all just pick every four picks and just run right. through a rookie mock three yeah, round absolutely. or something. Yeah. You know? I want to do that. I just need to get a few more subscribers. If I get to 50 subscribers, then I then YouTube lets me do it live. So I just got to get a few more guys to subscribe. And How many? There. I, I need 13. 13. Yeah. All right. I'll yeah. get some people. <laughs> All right. I'll get some people. Let's do it. We just got to, yeah. I mean, think about it. If we get everybody in the league to do it, that would, we'd almost be there because there's probably six or seven that haven't subscribed yet. I'm sure there's well, a few other what, guys. You plug some dudes in the league and then they start showing people them on Well, they're going to subscribe people now that you've been on the show. Yeah. Maybe. That'll we'll help. See. We'll see. I'm I'm gonna show people. I was like, look, I did a podcast. Check it out, and I'll show them. Be like, fucking subscribe. Right. <laughs> You're gonna yeah. see me on it more. So, you know, exactly. Be like uh, Frank Rizzo from the uh, the Jerky Boys. Say, you subscribe <laughs> this fucking channel, I'll break your fucking head. You know. <laughs> oh, <Frank> Rizzo. Rizzo. <laughs> That's right, Frank Rizzo. <laughs> oh, those guys are the best. Oh, oh man, I used to have their CDs. They were great. Yeah, <laughs> nothing like the Jerky Boys in the mid '90s. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, it's funny because my wife was just watching The Water Boy upstairs. <laughs> oh, and it's all just the back to the 
the Jerky Boys and the Adam Sandler CD. I just remember listening to endlessly in high oh, school. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had uh, Adam Sandler. What the hell happened to me? That was, that was yes. great. Yeah, <laughs> I got a snake, man. I got. I liked uh, the goat. The goat was great. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it was. Oh, God, what the hell happened here? I lost my... Oh, there it is. Okay. There we go. Woo. All right, you're yeah. back. Yeah. All right. So, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my computer plugged in, find the file. Um, okay. Can you just text me the email? Uh, wait, it's... um. Is it the Birdhouse Dynasty Show at Gmail? Is that what it is? Um. No, I'll send you... I think I could just send you my, my regular email, just my okay. Yahoo. Yeah. Okay, yeah, or you can probably it. text it to me because I don't even have, yeah, I don't even have an email set up for my show yet. All right. Well, just send me your personal email so that okay. way I have that. And then I'll, I'll try to do both to the text and to the, um, and to the email. So that okay. way you have it on two fronts. Yep. Okay. Sounds good, Matt. I will, uh, I will then look at it i'll rip through it to set up a few chapters on it and get it uploaded to youtube as soon as possible okay cool man all right ton of fun man awesome. i loved it yeah me all too right. man we'll talk um, soon we'll do it again soon have a good night bro thanks you too man bye. all right man bye-bye